I'm Johnny. And it's time for theory. Musical theory. Now, whoa, 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 whoa. Don't like run away on me yet. This is going to be cool. As an aside, do you like my fancy penguin shirt? Shh. Don't tell anyone. They're PJs. Uniform of COVID-19 isolation. Am I right? I have this way that I like to visualize music that I'd like to share with you all. I found this a really excellent way to understand harmonies and melodies. Now, the Monday morning suit and tie on official name of this theory is the relativistic musical theory. However, the 420 on a Friday afternoon name is donuts, lows, and bowls. So why did I feel the need for a new theory of music? That's kind of crazy, right? Number one, I wanted to democratize the creation of music. And I felt like that this stacking donuts methodology of little flagpoles on a staff, uh, it's a little opaque, right? You can't look at that and glean meaning unless you've been deeply trained in that system. I mean, sure. Yeah. There's this notion of like, if the things are higher then the pitches are higher, but like, what are all these hashtags? The other thing that I wanted to do is I wanted to make musical choices easier to understand, easier to reason about, and make the consequences of those decisions easier to visualize. Now, I know that sounds like a lot, but just hold on. It's not that bad. Okay, so let's just get some base assumptions out of the way, just so that like those of you with a music theory background kind of know where I'm coming from. First of all, we're just straight up assuming 12 tone equal temperament. It's been the system we've been using forever. It's what most digital audio workstations work in. Like, that's fine. 12 tone equal temperament. The whole system values results over rules. Like, if something doesn't work, I'm willing to throw it out because it doesn't work. And ultimately, we are shaped in the musical tradition that we're born in. But that should not trap us. All right. Let's talk about some notes. So one of the central pillars of the system is that notes don't have an absolute pitch. Within the standard Western musical tradition, this little thing here has a pitch of exactly 440 cycles per second. In my system, you don't have that. What you've got is a tonal center, and that's visualized by a big white donut. Now, since there are 12 notes, we can almost picture it like a clock face. And from this white donut, we're going to then derive two other notes from that. Now, within the normal Western musical tradition, those would be a perfect fourth and a perfect fifth. Ultimately, this is a perfect fifth below and a perfect fifth above that root note, that central note, that tonal center. Now, these two sounds, when paired with the tonal center, sound very pleasing. In fact, they have almost a perfect three to two ratio. And we can totally get into tuning ratios and tuning systems and how the ear works. There's a lot of cool people that have done a lot of cool things about that already. So I'm just going to point in those directions. Check the notes down below. Okay. So now we've got three out of 12 notes all figured out, right? Well, let's talk about the opposites. So directly opposite of the white donut, we've got the black donut. And if you play the white and black donuts together, these sounds will clash. They will sound really ugly. And a perfect fifth above the black donut is the black loaf, which also clashes with the white donut. And again, a perfect fifth below, we've got the black bowl. You can see how these white notes and black notes have a relationship with each other. And that relationship can be viewed as almost adversarial. That moving between one and the other in the myriad of ways is going to sound very grinding and full of dissonance. However, moving between their own kind sounds close and together. No, this is not some sort of racial analogy. There's an important thing I should note about bowls. Bowls in the system are special, and we'll get to that a little later. Okay, so now we're... Six out of 12, we got half out of the way. So what's going on with all these empty spaces on either side? Well, these are what I like to call the modal notes. And so what you do is you take the structure that I've got here and you rotate it 90 degrees and now you've got a whole new set of notes. In this case, I've chosen green and blue. The green notes all have a vertical line down the middle of them and they sound bright and energetic when compared to the white notes. 
Now, as an aside, the reason why I stroke a line down the middle is that so if you want to write this down in pen or pencil, then you don't have to worry about carrying a set of colored markers around. Now, the blue notes, when compared to the white, sound a little darker, and they have a horizontal line stroked through them. Now, incidentally enough, not really incidentally, all the green notes make up the major key, and all the blue notes make up the minor key. And just like before, if you try to mix green and blue notes, then you're going to get that sense of dissonance, that sense of clashing. However, when you're mixing green with green and blue with blue, the things sound very consonant. Now, again, this is all relativistic. You can choose whichever key, C, A sharp, F, and all that changes would be the rotation of those absolute note values around the circle of my notes. Okay, so here's how you use it. Let's take Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. And in fact, you can even see that the movement of the donut to loaf is the twinkle twinkle that puts that twinkle into little star. Very pleasing. And in fact, if we look at the notation of twinkle twinkle little star, we can even see how it's made up primarily of white and green notes. Again, a very pleasing, happy, gentle, if not slightly middling and, and milk toast sound. Just perfect for babies. Whereas if we compare it to the oncoming of Jaws, you can see the spookiness as it moves from the white and black notes. The black donut is like a cute little shark fin. Spooky. So that's the essence of the system. Basically when composing a melody, you could start by looking at one note, considering where you want to go, where you want to take it, and then based off of that, make your choice. I want things to be happy. I'll move towards something like a loaf and probably something in the green area or maybe the white area. Oh no, I want something sad or more morose. No, I'm going to go towards blue or even I want something spooky. So it goes right into the darkness. But there's a second layer to this system, and that is that each note has one of six roles. These roles will give you a sense of how each note will relate to that tonal center and how they relate to each other over and above this whole perfect fifth nonsense, but they do relate. And let's start with the simple roles. So you got the tonal anti-tonal roles. Tonal notes will sound resolved. They'll bring everything to completion. They'll fit, they'll gel. Whereas the anti-tonal notes are spicy. They'll clash, they'll cause a lot of dissonance. And this should be no surprise with what I just told you. The next set of roles are modal and hollow. Now modal notes are the ones that make a major key sound major or happy. When you add a modal note, you're really weighting a sense of emotionality to that song, be it like happy or sad, but perhaps brighter or darker is a much better way to look at it. Hollow notes on the other hand are exactly the opposite. They don't inherently change the flavor of what you're saying. They do however clash or reinforce that modality. Now, finally, we get into the unstable and leading roles. And these are the most important in my opinion. Remember when I said that the bowls are special? These guys are the engines of resolution that add just the right amount of tension and push or fall into a resolution. Now, leading tones push towards a resolution. And there are two of those. They really want to move to the next note up or down. The black bowl really wants to push towards the white donut, whereas the blue bowl really wants to push towards the white loaf. Unstable notes, however, kind of want to fall into either the, the closest tonal or the closest modal note. And it's really kind of wishy-washy like that. They don't have as much energy or drive as the leading notes. That's fine. You don't even need or want that necessarily. With these six rolls, apply to the notes, you can then make smarter decisions about what kind of notes you want to play. And in fact, I posit to you that with this in mind, you could develop your own chords and think about your own chord progressions in this way. But before we get to chords, we need to talk a little bit about intervals. Now, forgive me, but I do need to take a quick digression into intervals. So what's an interval? Well, an interval is a space between the notes. And with my system, there are seven primary and five secondary intervals, and they're related. The first one is kind of a degenerate. 
it's the unison. It's two notes that are exactly the same. They sound great together. They sound exactly the same. The next interval is stepwise. And again, if you look at the system, you can already kind of guess how that interval is going to sound clashing. After that, the interval I'm calling a sextile, at least temporarily, because I don't have a great name for it. It sounds vaguely mysterious and unsure. The next two, the names are still straight from the Western musical tradition. They fit. They're the minor and the major intervals. These are three steps and four steps, respectively. Consider the modal intervals. The almost perfect interval. It's not quite a perfect fifth. It's a perfect fourth, but it's pretty close. And then the devil's interval. This is the tritone. And boy, howdy, does this interval clash as we previously discovered. After that, there's a reflection in these intervals. So there's the perfect interval, the anti-major, the anti-minor, the mysterious unnamed interval, because I'm still working it out. And likewise, the backwise interval. The names are still kind of a work in progress here. But I have these icons here to represent the sounds of the intervals, right? And you can see how these icons are even a reflection of how they look on the clock face. As with the main note names, there's some sense as to how these intervals sound. The unison, the perfect, and the near-perfect intervals sound great and wonderful and very pleasing together. Major and minor because it's bright and dark. Anti-major and anti-minor because, well, it's dark-ish and bright-ish, but not in quite the same way. And finally, there's the, 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 those other ones that I don't have a good name for. Honestly, I haven't quite pinned them down. Let's just call them mysterious and anti-mysterious. Anti-mysterious really kind of sounds like Grunkle Stan's ex-wife. Am I right? As we push notes together, either in a row like a melody or all together at the same time as a harmony, then understanding how these notes relate to each other is super duper important. So let's talk about harmony here when you play notes all at the same time. And typically... Within the Western tradition, these are called chords and chords have to have three notes or more. And there's a very strict system of how those chords are constructed. Less so with donuts, loaves, and bowls. If you play two notes at the same time, it's a chord. We're good. Doesn't matter which two, pick any two or more. It's a chord. So consider this one. If we just look at its raw notes, and then think about the roles that those notes have, we can already make some judgments about it. The white donut and bowl, they're gonna give each other strength. They're gonna work well together, but there's gonna be some clashing with that black bowl. That green loaf is gonna add a sense of happiness to it. And again, if we look at the roles, we can see that this chord has got a lot of tonality. It's got two tonal roll notes. It's got modality. It's bringing a lot of feeling to the table. It's also got this pushing or this leading nature, but we can also decompose all the intervals within this chord. So in a line below, we would start by writing out the intervals to the first note or the lowest note in the chord. So we've got a major interval, we've got a perfect interval, and then we've got the backwise interval. And again, we can make judgments, emotionality, tonality, and dissonance. Then we take the second note, and we check that against the other two. And we'll look at those intervals. Now this second line is gonna have a lot less effect, but those effects are darker emotionality and perfect. And then the last two notes, again, is a major interval, giving it much stronger, brighter emotionality. And really, it's that first horizontal line and then the diagonal line that gets created that really give you a sense of that chord's quality. Looking at those will really give you a sense of its shape, really give you a sense of its sound. The other intervals too will have an effect, but not as strong. And to drive the point home, consider this chord here versus this chord here. If you look at the intervals, the intervals are still the same, but it's where they're placed that really counts. That tritone interval that one with a lot of tension isn't sitting on the diagonal line in this one versus this one. It really just like add up some notes. This chord here, I mean, I don't know what it's called within the Western musical tradition, 
possibly be sus to sus for augmented or maybe a suspended two four B sharp five flat five, but it still sounds pretty sweet. And I'm really just scratching the surface here. We haven't gone anywhere near the classical modes yet and how this system helps you understand those. And there's still a lot of work we could get it into on the chords, but this is hopefully enough to like whet your appetite and get you thinking about music and notes in different ways and how those notes relate and how you can reason about them. All right, let's talk about the ways in which the system fails and areas that still need to be worked out. First of all, there's no mention of rhythm yet. I still need to spend some time thinking about rhythm and how rhythm would get expressed in this system. I have vague ideas, but I'm not there yet and I haven't been working on that yet. This is mostly about melodic and harmonic movement. Also, the terminology is a bit of a mouthful. Like within the Western system, it's pretty simple. You got a letter, maybe a modifier. So like B sharp, whereas I have a thing like white donut. And there are upsides and downsides to both. Like within the Western system, you're always thinking about things in terms of a seven note scale. Whereas within donuts, lows and bowls, you're thinking about things in terms of 12 tones and how they relate. And finally, the, the biggest downside thus far, which I mean, I'm hoping to change is that this is a system where the knowledge about it is, well, one person uses this system. That is to say me. And I've talked about it with a couple of people, but that's it. So don't go trying to talk to your musical friends about this system, at least not until you show them this video first. All right. And finally, there's a couple of people I really need to thank. First of all, to Francis, Warren and Calvin, all three of them I've ranted to endlessly about this system as I worked through it and got their extremely knowledgeable and talented takes on this system, each coming from a different, but yet excellent perspective. It's because of your insightful questions and suggestions that I've been able to really push this this far and like really get some understanding here. Also, thanks to dad and Shirley, two excellent, excellent musicians in their own right. Their encouragement also pushed me forward to, to make this happen. And of course, my lovely wife. Thanks, baby. You're the best. Finally, this video is dedicated to Triple AM. All right, as I said, I've only scratched the surface here. There's a lot more material here. Hopefully we'll get into it. And until next time, and don't forget, science without sanity is mad.